And we're back for another casual conversation with the classic and Mike Wexon. Today we have a very special guest, former Evolve PWG and Impact Tag Team Champion and current AEW star, Ethan Page. How are we doing today? How are you? Great. That was a really good intro. Oh, thank you. You guys, you guys <laughs> dug deep there for those. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I want to kick things off just asking a really specific question because, um, you know, for my listeners and people out there, I think a lot of us went through a lot through 2020. It was a year that made us have to, you know, really reshuffle the deck and figure things out because everything was, uh, you know, went a different way in different direction without our control. So I want to ask you, how has 2021 been different for you than 2020? Um, well, I have a completely different job, completely <laughs> yeah. different, uh, in- employer, um, more stability, um, less stress. Uh, so 2021 is leaps and bounds better than, uh, 2020 for me personally. But, uh, I would say, uh, 2020 was a, like a big career year for me that I got to essentially, like you were saying, like shift everything and change everything but kind of like adapt and i managed to grow my brand and my name uh during 2020 so no shade at last year whatsoever <laughs> oh yeah and- the same way in that sense because i do think like with 2020 it, it made us have to like rethink and replan and reorganize and i think that's a silver lining of it because everything that everyone's kind of achieving and succeeding at this year is because last year really put us in a position of like having to figure everything out from a new new uh perspective (laughs) yeah for sure i i I think everyone will be rewarded for kind of like the groundwork that they laid in 2020 to essentially keep going in 2021 like when things are opening back up and you're going to be seeing especially in wrestling with live crowds the people that are going to get the best reactions are the ones that kind of went above and beyond to entertain people while essentially the world was shut down so i'm hoping i was one of those people and uh, my fans follow me while things start opening back up. But yeah, I think whoever laid down good groundwork in 2020 will benefit this year for sure. I definitely do think that uh, you were one of those people, you know, one of the big su- surprises in this past period of time oh. where we've had a hard time of no fans. And, you know, it just, I think, uh, I think people need to appreciate the wrestling business just a little bit more because it was one of the only forms of entertainment that consistently kept going on during this whole pandemic with no family hey, and thing. And that's, I thought it was we're really, essential. Really for it. Yeah. Essential. <laughs> we are essential. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Mike. Oh yeah. So um, I wanted to ask this because everybody has inspirations when it comes to wrestling. I mean, Justin's favorite wrestler of all time is the macho man, Randy Savage. So that's <laughs> something of a huge inspiration for you. Uh, so choice. Ethan, my uh, first question to you is what was kind of your first in, like inspirations in wrestling? Because you've had a very decorated career thus far. So, I mean, there had to be a couple of options for you to kind of have that inspiration from. Yeah, like my 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 father watched wrestling um, when I was really young, and it was kind of like something we did together. So uh, there's always going to be that connection, and then that kind of love for wrestling dwindled away until I want to say the Attitude Era, which started creeping into like I have like older cousins, and they would collect the figures and they would watch wrestling, and at the time it was such an edgy product that. Um, the age I was, was kind of too young to watch. So it was like this forbidden style of entertainment. And I would like be sneaking in to try and be able to watch it with everybody or uh, see what was on the TV. And then uh, I fell in love with the rock. So he's kind of um, my number one, as far as like wrestlers that I liked growing up and that I have a huge fandom for. Um, And now being in the industry and the position that I'm in, in my career, he's, gone above and beyond to be now kind of like a role model or like uh, some footsteps that I'd like to follow as far as career wise and achievements. I mean, lofty goal there, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> now you got to set your goals high. Cause you know, otherwise yeah. you're, you're setting the bar too low. What's the point? You got to reach. I agree. Through. Yeah, I agree. And I'm sure he heard the same thing too. So um, yeah, I would say it definitely did start though uh, with my dad watching it when I was really, really, really young. I find that actually really interesting because I went through the, I, we might be around the same age because I went through the same scenario of having to sneak around to watch oh, specifically WWF programming because it was a little bit more edgy. So I completely understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. And then I, it's crazy because I also used to be like, yo, looking back at it now, a lot of that stuff flew over my head as a kid. I didn't even know what they were talking about, but now I understand why it was so edgy. Well, okay. So like, how, how old are you? I'm 31. I'm 29. I'm 30 in uh, the end of this year. 
Okay, so I was born in 89. You were born in 91. 91. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're the same age as my sister. We grew up essentially best friends. And like yeah. anything I did, she would end up kind of watching along too. So there's like instances where now as a father and like having my own three-year-old, like things will come on the TV and I'm like, what the hell is my kid watching? <laughs> so I'll like, you know, yeah. poke my head around the corner, see what the heck is going on. Do you guys remember the Warzone game for PlayStation 1? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Ahmed Johnson screams at you, right? Yeah, so Ahmed Johnson, who knows what he's even saying in the entire <laughs> game. But uh, you have Mankind, who, when he gets hit, he squeals like a pig. <laughs> yeah. So now, just imagine, you know, just a mother cooking dinner and her son, you know, playing harmless video games that his family members illegally burned because he got his PlayStation one modified. It. Yeah. No big deal. I was cool as hell. And, uh, so I'm playing this game, mankind squealing like a pig. And my mom's upstairs just like, what the hell is this kid watching? What is he playing? What is going on? And then she just sees WWF attitude. So yeah, yeah. I, no, I, 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 I understand mom. Okay. I get it. Yeah, like I get it when I got older. Like all the all the little innu innuendos and everything flew over my head. Didn't understand sure. it. And I watch it back now. I'm like, oh, I can see as like a grow. Like now I'm an adult. Like if my little cousins and stuff were watching this, no, really young, I'd be like, no, you can't watch this. <laughs> I don't kind of right. Yeah. Um. Now you're in AEW though, and you're working with um <laughs> a ton of people. You probably grew up watching, whether they're backstage or on screen. And I'm just curious. Um, from those people working along with them, plus just people that are active wrestling of the current modern era. Like, who are some of the people you're looking forward to working with? Like, is did you have any major goals for when you came here to AEW? I mean, th th those are two completely different questions. I'm gonna give you yeah. two completely different answers because Perfect. my goals. No, my goals. <laughs> My goals coming to the company have nothing to do with who stands across the ring for me. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, to answer your first question, I've said this in every interview. Um, I think Ray Phoenix is the best wrestler in the world or one of. Um, I'd love to share the ring with him. I have before, but this was before I lost weight, before I kind of became the performer that I'm proud to say that I am today in 2021. So I'd like to test myself in that aspect again. And I mean, now I have my friend, Scorpio Sky. We've kind of been teaming a little bit. So the thoughts of myself and Scorpio against Pac and Ray Phoenix, that's definitely up there, especially with the match that we saw last night on Dynamite, which is one of the best televised wrestling matches in the last couple of years. I, really I think personally, it was, it was amazing. Um, but for personal and selfish reasons, I would love uh, not just a match, but kind of time to let our characters develop uh, against uh, Christian Cage. There's so many um, things for me personally. One, he's from Ontario. I'm from Ontario. Mm -hmm. We're both Canadian. We both had to like grind to get out of this country and kind of succeed in the world of professional wrestling, which is always going to be America. So for us to be able to, you know, legally perform in the country <laughs> together, you know, it'd be nice to, you know, pat each other on the back and uh, have a nice little, you know, feud. Yeah. I'm, su I'm sure it'd be very easy for us to talk trash to each other and to be super uh, charismatic. He thinks he's the captain of that. So that would be cool to put that to the test. Yeah. So uh, I would love to do anything with uh, Christian cage and uh, yeah, I could, the list goes like on and on. No, like, definitely. Have, that that yeah. roster is stacked, but I think a feud with you and Christian cage would be actually amazing. Two Canadians going at it. we got a young buck. we got the legend, the seasoned veteran. I think there's a story there for sure, Mike. Yeah, so Ethan, I'm very curious about this next question. So you did mention about Scorpio Sky and teaming yeah. with them. I mean, obviously we saw from the promos that we've seen over the past couple of weeks. Of course, my favorite being when you two have that little angle where you're one side and then the other side and you guys say it at the exact same moment. It kind of, you can feel the intensity within that promo, but I'm really curious. Uh, is there a potential tag team name in the works for this? No. And, you know, there's like so many people that have been commenting on this, you know, uh, why did Scorpio Sky leave SCU just to end up with a new partner? Um, we have not put any labels on this. OK, there there's no labels on this. There's no team names on this. Um, in one of the promos, which you could see in one of my vlogs recently, uh, we are very like minded individuals, but the word individual is very important. Because we are. We are individuals. We don't have matching tights. Uh, we don't walk the same. We don't talk the same. We just kind of agree with each other that we feel 
as two of the best up and coming talent, the future of the company, which if AEW plans on being around for a very long time, they should be focusing on the people that are going to be here for a very long time. And both of us have plans to be here for a very long time. I'm doing this interview. I have yet to do an interview that I have not rocked the logo. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a flag waver. I'm a, I'm a company guy. And I feel like they should have and still can roll out the red carpet for me and afford me things that I feel I deserve. And Scorpio feels the same. So we're not really focusing on a team name or, you know, making this like a marketing tool because we're both successful in our own right. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't know. Like, do you ever just have someone you like hanging out with? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you like having someone around that pumps your tires and yeah. reminds you how awesome you are at your job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you make yeah. a, a name for each other. For the, the That's it. <laughs> yeah. I got. You know, and I do like the pairing of you guys because you know there's uh, the tag division in AEW is probably one of my favorite divisions. It's stacked with talent. There's so many great matchups there that you could have. You know, you mentioned Ray Phoenix and Pac. You mentioned um, uh, other superstars that you could team with, uh, team against. And obviously, you got the Young Bucks. You got the Butcher and the Blade. You got FTR out there. There's just so many good teams, and it's just going to be great to see you guys mixed up with those guys. But I'm curious, like just. Um, you've done a lot of tag team wrestling in your career, of course, like in the impact you were in the North with the North and stuff. I'm curious, like what, like what's the difference for you when it comes to, in terms of tag team wrestling and singles wrestling? Like, what do you prefer? Oh, I, I have no preference. Okay. Yeah. If you, if it was up to me, I'd never wrestle again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, what's the difference between them for you? Like, I, I think not to, I don't know. I, like this could be, twisted in, in, in a negative but it's definitely not a negative it's a lot easier to steal the show in a tag match um and i say that with so much experience in it uh especially with the over year-long title reign myself and my former partner josh alexander had uh, at impact there's so many more moving parts there's so many more rules there's so much more excitement um whereas in a singles match there's just the two guys and uh there may be a lot of downtime if both guys are you know knocked out uh, yeah. there's no get, there's no getting in fresh uh, opponents or partners so it's a, it's a different dynamic and uh, if you look at a wrestling show altogether I feel like a tag match is a gimmick like anything that's just more than one-on-one -on -one is supposed to be a spectacle and it's something that was invented to kind of you know change the pace of just so and so versus so and so and a tag match is that a three-way is that, a four-way is that, a handy, anything that's different than just one-on-one -on -one is going to have a better chance of captivating the audience and having a better match just because of there's more moving parts. It's different. It's a different dynamic. It's a, a different presentation to the audience, and no one wants to see the same thing over and over again. No, for sure. I definitely I definitely understand that. And I think that's true with the tag match you got. like You got more moving pieces, get more different action going on, and people kind of get to – Calm down for a second. Get back in there fresh. Like it's it's a yeah. I can totally get where that where you're coming from with that. Mike, do you want to go ahead with the next one? Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. So the next question that I have for you is something that was truly a spectacle last year. Uh, it is the body guy extravaganza that you hosted last year. And what was interesting was that due to the pandemic, it was obviously supposed to be a physical event, but due to the pandemic, it was canceled. And you found a very unique way to do it. You did it in an animation form, and then you had all these voiceovers from Chris Van Bleet, from Scott Steiner, I believe, was a part of that, and just so many moving pieces in that. So can you talk to us about how much of a process that was to tra transition from a physical event to this cartoon extravaganza that ended <laughs> up happening? So if anyone is like, wants to do like a real deep dive into it, there's like a 33 minute documentary style vlog that I did kind of documenting the entire process of it. Cause it was literally just a week. Um, we were all kind of waiting to see like if things were going to get canceled. And once things started just kind of falling to the wayside and everything is just essentially getting shut down. Um, April 3rd was like appro approaching very quickly. And I wanted to find a unique way of still giving the fans the show that I envisioned because in my mind, I was already pre-planning on ending up in AEW. So I didn't know if this was ever going to even be possible again. I didn't know if I was ever going to do a WrestleCon again or work with high spots again, or be able to have like a Ethan page branded show again. So it, in a selfish way, I wanted to make sure people knew these ideas that I had because yeah. I was so proud of them. Like I was working on these ideas for over a year 
So we came up with the cartoon idea um, and it, it, it kind of just snowballed. I found a artist on Twitter, just, hey, does anyone know how to animate? And, and, uh, this amazing artist named Matt McKnight replied with like a uh, little pack uh, animation he did. And he's like, yo, I'm, I'm literally working on this. And I was like, oh, that's exactly what I need. It looks like scribbles. That means we could do it quickly. Um, and then it kind of just came to me learning how to, I essentially taught myself how to take little like quick animations and loop them or slow them down or reverse them. So I would take something he would send me, which is maybe a second or two and turn it into like a three minute um, thing with sound effects. Uh, I would make the mouse move. So like, I don't know, like I was literally learning on the job and we had to get this done within a week. So it was, I want to say under seven days we got it done and no one saw the final product until it launched live. And I was very happy with the amount of people that watched live and kind of the buzz around it because nobody knew. I, I asked everyone involved to not talk about it other than <laughs> that it was like a real event. So I, my favorite was the comments. So obviously everyone's like, oh, this is hilarious or oh, I can't believe he thought of this. And then the people that are like, I'm so mad. I ordered three pizzas. My friends are over. This thing was only 15 minutes long. <laughs> so like people thought the show was going to happen somehow. I don't know yeah. how, but uh, yeah. So it was like, you know, it was a gift, but it was also a little bit of a rib on the wrestling fans too. No, they, they were looking for a full length hour show or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Will we ever see anything like that again? Do you have plans of doing anything like that again now that you've done it? And I'm, I'm guessing you enjoyed it and the feedback from it. So I will say more than likely no. And I only say no because um, I'm just not in that survival mindset anymore. Whereas yeah. like that was like a means to an end and like uh, not to dig too deep into my financials of that year, but it was very, very, very thin. Um, mm. And that is, that's where all the creativity came from. And I, I'm not in like a drowning scenario anymore so the i guess the creative juices aren't flowing as much whereas like the body guy extravaganza came from that uh slap chump came from that uh the all the karate man stuff yeah. <laughs> came from me trying to pay my bills and like feed my family during the craziest time so what, were, what was the thought process behind the karate stuff uh t-shirts yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. T-shirts, wrestling buddies. And, um, I wanted to, because I, my biggest fear was I promised, uh, my fans that I would have a weekly vlog. So if there's no shows, I don't have enough content. I have to find a way to kind of, you know, continue some form of storytelling. And I've, thought the karate man was a really unique way of doing it because I was getting so comfortable with the green screen and yeah. kind of creating my own stuff that, uh, I thought eventually on my own YouTube channel to fight myself would be like <laughs> the most entertaining thing. And like to, to see the comments, by the way, that people put out there like, Oh, this is not professional wrestling. This is the last thing from what professional wrestling needs. I agree with you guys. That's why it's on my YouTube channel. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Speaking about your YouTube channel and your vlogs, um, when I first started following you on social media and stuff, um, I was I I'm I'm one of those people that I love watching all the weekly vlogs when I get a chance. I'm one of those guys that will not watch them for a few weeks and I'll sit there and I'll binge watch like three, four. Yeah, and that's what I, that's the viewer I am. Um, and the one thing that I always impressed me since like years ago was your weight loss journey and becoming in the shape that you're in today. And it's actually really inspiring for a lot of people, including <laughs> myself. Um. <laughs> What inspired you to want to get into this shape? Um, obviously, there's obvious answers like your wrestling career and whatnot, but like, was there, what did it do for your mental health? And like, uh, what inspired you to do that? And has it made you feel like you're better at doing what you're doing today because you're more comfortable in your own skin? Or how does that work out? Yeah, it like gave me a confidence that I didn't even know I had. Uh, the, the funniest, I guess, comment on the whole thing was some fan put out. Um, Ethan Page finally looks the way he's thought of himself his entire career. And I yeah. was like, that is so funny, but weirdly so true. Um, I always knew that I would end up in a position where I would be this comfortable. And uh, I think elevated myself to 
uh, obviously a point that someone saw value in me, like AEW to kind of lock me in for a couple of years and um, invest in the future. Clearly not good enough since I'm very angry with Scorpio Sky on weekly <laughs> television. Um, I would say there were so many factors in it. One was I have dedicated my essentially my entire life, but now my family's life, um, my daughter, my wife, that I feel if I don't give 100% in all aspects of it, then I shouldn't kind of be risking everyone's future to do this job. So I like that was the only flaw in my game. And I wanted to be 100% ready for anything and everything that happened once my impact contract uh, was about to expire. So it was all just preparing for free agency and kind of proving my value to the world as best as I could with the minimal amount of people that were seeing me on a weekly basis. Have you ever thought about doing something in the sense, I know you've done specific vlog episodes where you describe your diet and your workout and whatnot. I remember I popped at one point when you were like, uh, when I want a snack, I get one of those pepperette sticks. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yo, that's literally like my 2 a.m. snack. Like if I get hungry at like 2 a.m. and I made the mistake of staying up, which I try not to do, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna eat one of these little pepperette sticks. <laughs> Dude, you get that. Listen. Snyder's hot listen. pepperoni sticks. <laughs> There you go. That's the Snyder. <laughs> give, me a, give me a European style pepperette. Yeah. Oh, it's delicious. And you know what made me even more happy that I saw a commercial for it during Dynamite? It was yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, listen, that's, not that's only. My that's my guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, not only is this good for my health, yeah. but also I'm supporting one of the sponsors of the best wrestling company in the world. Yeah. It was like, look at this synergy going on here. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely synergy. But my question was, have you ever thought about actually putting something out there maybe that like, you know, breaks down your diet or maybe um, shows what your workout is in a more like structured version, maybe in a book or like on a vlog or something that, I mean, a, a blog where people can read or something. Um, so that people can follow I, along. I've thought about it, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. truly, I don't think I know anything. And like, if you did watch that vlog, uh, I think I reiterated multiple times. I'm not a scientist. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> You're showing the I'm, protein. Yeah. And stuff. Like, I don't really know what's in here, but this is the one I use and it's good. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> so like for me, it's, I just found what works for me. That's essentially it. So if you're the same height as me, six, two, if you weigh the same as me, uh, you know, averaging about two twenty, maybe this would work for you. Maybe not though. I don't know. Cause like, I also ate like crap for 15 years and lifted weights on a regular basis. So like, I had muscle underneath that was kind of just being ready and waiting to be shown to the world. Whereas I feel like a lot of uh, beginners are kind of starting off with not so much muscle mass. So I don't know how many calories I burn just kind of sitting. So like, I know a little bit of the science behind it, which is also reiterates why I should not be telling people what to do because I don't know. I don't know people's bodies. I don't know people's body types. The only thing I can say is like, you have to find what works for you specifically. You can't read what works for someone else and automatically assume it's going to work for you. And you have to give yourself at least a month. Um, uh, if you're starting anything off new, I would definitely not go two weeks, expect amazing results, and then kind of be like, well, this isn't working for me. I'm just yeah. going to go back to Little Caesars, which is great. I love Little Caesars. But give it some time. It takes your body time to adjust. And then once your body gets into a rhythm, um, it's all about kind of forming new habits. And yeah, I, get, I know it's kind of cliche and it's already out there and people already hear it all the time, but like diet is like a big part of making it all work out, right? Like what you eat is more, like more important than just working out, correct? Oh yeah. You could look amazing and not lift a single weight. So like I, when I lost all the weight um, from April to, I want to say when is... I would say October, that window, uh, it was all essentially body weight stuff and riding a bike. So like, I didn't have that many weights. I didn't have a bunch of, like, I didn't have the Bowflex at the time. I literally just had up to 50 pound dumbbells and a sit up bench and, uh, my bike and a skipping rope. And I would do push ups, jumping jacks. It was like mostly body weight stuff. So yeah, you do not need to go to the gym. So yeah. don't make it. Don't That's make not an excuse, excuse guys. <laughs> the gym clothes, I can't go. You hear that a lot, especially in the past couple of years. I've been, um, you know, 
victim of saying that myself before. So <laughs> <laughs> other than that, um, your vlogs, like I'm a big fan of your vlogs, but if someone had not watched your vlogs yet, say they've never watched and obviously the most crucial thing to do would be start from where it's at right now and keep moving forward. But if you could recommend someone to go back and watch one of your specific vlogs, where would you tell them to go check this one out? Oh man, that is so hard. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I guess I would say to kind of get caught up on all like, I don't know, maybe the best of 2020 vlog. It kind of yeah. like, it, it, it just recaps everything that happened in that year. And that was probably the craziest year for my vlog at least. And it will give you a sense of like who I am and what the vlog is like and kind of like the flow of the vlog. And it gives, uh, I just, mine is not like skits and stuff. So yeah. like, I feel, I feel like if, people watched it they would understand like oh this is like an actual just he's walking around with a camera and talking to his friends yeah. or or like if he's like there's one where i just interview ken shamrock it's like I, my it's not an interview show <laughs> but, but it's, ken, yeah. it's ken shamrock, ken and shamrock I'm, and yeah. I'm a fan and I'm, yeah. like you know so yeah. i'm just recording my experience during the craziest parts of my career and uh yeah Check that one out. Check out the no, best. That's, I, I'm, the way, that's what I wanted you. I wanted you to describe what it was for the people that are listening that might not have checked it out. Because now, now you know. Like, it's different from the other vlogs you might watch, too. Like, there's something that's going to give you a little bit of a variety, and that's different. He, it's not always skits and whatnot. It's a lot of whatever Ethan's up to. You know? <laughs> like, that's It's literally it, which kind of makes it hard. Uh, and it puts a lot of pressure on me to kind of deliver content on a weekly basis. Because yeah. sometimes there's not a lot of stuff going on. So, like... I, but I'm not going to go out and kind of like create these like artificial moments to kind of mm -hmm. like fill, fill time. Um, you're, you're just going to get what you get, but it's going to be genuine and it's going to be uh, what's actually going on. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really cool. You talk about your experience and you talk about, you know, the kind of the involvement of showcasing your own story, which is amazing from inside the ring to outside the ring. Uh, one of those being showcased, uh, for your story is through documentaries. And one of my favorite documentaries that you've been in, aside from the Evolve ones, which is absolutely amazing with the storytelling and all that, is All Ego, the documentary made by uh, Kenny Johnson. So can you talk to us about, like, when you were filming that with Kenny Johnson, like, was there uh, kind of a nerve kind of doing your first solo documentary or what was that thought process like? Oh no! Come on, man. My name's All Ego. I was like, this guy's gonna, <laughs> this guy's gonna follow me around with a camera, film me, interview me, and, and, <laughs> and I, don't, I don't have to do the video editing for it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's easy, no problem. Plus, uh, Kenny's a friend of mine, and he's helped me out with a lot of projects. Uh, he actually helped me color correct part of the Body Guy Extravaganza. So, um, yeah, definitely. Um, it was very easy, very easy. And I highly suggest checking out anything that he's done. Yeah, I know there's some good ones there. Yeah. Um, really quickly now, the Canadian amusement to come out. Of course, you're, you're in the States now, correct? No, I'm in Canada right now. Oh, you're still in Canada. Okay, because I was going to be like, I was going to be like, so like, what do you miss about Canada that you can't get in the States? Because there's a ton of stuff here. Nothing. Then. Nothing, yeah, no. <laughs> Would you ever want to move to the States officially? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, because I was like, I, I always ask that. Like, I did, I did an interview with Renee Paquette, and she was gave me like a list of things she missed about Canada, and I was like, oh, it's crazy. Right, so for me, the only thing I would miss because I've traveled so much is just my family. That's no, it. Like, sure. um, I've, I'm very accustomed to uh, a lot of American lifestyle when it comes to the places that I've traveled, and it would be very easy for me to adjust and really enjoy um, the American life. My family, I don't know. We'll find out eventually one day. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the only thing I would really miss from here is like, I guess, local spots. But like, that's just location. That's not really like a Canadian thing. Like in Hamilton, my hometown, there's a great pizza place that I love going to. There's a great donut shop I love going to. But other than that, I can eat those on holidays when I come to visit. So no, fair enough. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So moving forward, like, you were obviously you're still early in your career. We got lots of lots of gas left in the tank for sure. But like as of right now, like if you ha were talking to someone that was trying to break into wrestling or get into wrestling, like what would you want to tell them about breaking into wrestling, and what would you want yourself to be remembered as as of right now? 
I would tell <laughs> anyone uh, any, anyone breaking into wrestling, I would say be prepared for some of the worst days of your life um, and some of the best days of your life. Wrestling will give you um, both in uh, l- large quantities. Um, yeah, definitely like some of the toughest days mentally I've ever had to endure is because of professional wrestling and physically too. Um, but I can say some of my fondest memories are performing in front of a live crowd and just having some of those amazing matches that kind of just give you body chills, just being in the moment. And um, I know fans know exactly what I'm talking about too. Cause it's just the air in the room is thick. It's, it's literally electric and it's, it, you can just tell that something special is going on. And for you to be the catalyst of that. And the reason that people are, that hype and that excited and that in tune with what's happening at that very moment is something extremely special. And I think that's what we all chase as performers. So just know with that comes the bad too. So be prepared for both. And if you're willing to commit your life to it, uh, commit fully. Um, and what do I want my legacy to be? I I don't know. I like, I, I wanted it to be, you know, championships and money, but I, I think just, uh, especially with, with the way the world is going, I would just like to be known as someone that treated people fairly, um, was honest and upfront and, uh, you know, just a good dude. Like I try to help out as many people as I can throughout my entire wrestling career. And I, I, you know, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I mean, it's yeah. kind of odd to ask right now because you've still got so much left to do, but I'd like to throw that question at the end of these interviews just to let people kind of, people that might not be aware of who you are have been watching AEW, might not have seen other stuff, like to get to know who Ethan Page is. And I think people should keep getting to know who Ethan Page is. Check out those vlogs, tune into Dynamite, watch Dark, watch Elevation, watch the pay-per-views, get involved, man. We got wrestling during this entire time, so we need to appreciate that, guys, because it would have been rough without wrestling, could you imagine? Um, <laughs> yeah. And I know you guys are probably just waiting for the day that we can have full crowds back, and hopefully that happens soon, too. Um, Man, when they did that house show, the house always wins. Yeah, it was like Tony Khan goes out, does his like intro speech, and just hearing the people react to him because I was in the opening match, so I'm getting ready to go out there. I'm warming up, and I could hear. I think there was like 1,500, maybe a little bit more. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, just that like feedback from an audience was giving me chills. I was like, oh, I forgot what this felt like. Wait a second. We're going to get reactions. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, does anyone know who I am? I wonder if they're going to make noise when I walk out there. Oh, I hope but, they uh, release that one of these days because I think to see everyone's genuine reactions, you guys are coming out, must have been great because everyone oh, must have been excited. Everyone was very excited. Uh, it was a very special day. And uh, in two weeks, you're going to be able to see it on my vlog. Oh. There you go. There you go. Sweet. So guys, make sure you subscribe to his vlog on YouTube. And, and I, I'm telling you, man, I've been telling this to people for months, like mostly my like non wrestling friends. I'm like, I don't really watch and stuff. I'm like, you guys don't understand. I'm like, wrestling's like the one form of entertainment that like it, they feed off the crowd. This isn't like watching hockey or basketball where it's going to be like super competitive, regardless of the fact. Or like yeah. UFC, where you're probably trying to tune out people generally because you're trying to focus on your fight. Like they, this is the crowd's part of the show. So like, for them to still be doing this, it's like. It's in, for you guys to still be doing this. I should say, like it's uh, <laughs> it's insane, you know. Um, oh, for sure. Like uh, I went from, like a little bit of a crowd. Oh, dude, like that's like literally a little bit of a crowd excites me because I went from empty studio television tapings in like bulk for Impact, yeah. where we would film for five days straight, and it was you, your opponent, the referee, <laughs> and the people holding the cameras. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. Like, no no reaction, no adrenaline, no nothing. Like I remember on my last day when I knew I wasn't staying, I'm just about to go out and wrestle Carl Anderson and I was so hype about this match and like it's a singles match and uh I felt I was in the best shape ever. I was on the top of my game. I could have fallen asleep like on my till before I walk out because I was just like there's no people there. There's no energy yeah. there there's no the the vibe is just not the same it's not it's not what it was so um yeah it's, it, it was tough to get excited about stuff knowing that i was just going to be killing my body you know with no reaction <laughs> yeah that's what i mean and I, and I bet there is that little click that i've heard about it before where like you know you could be in any type of mood before you walk through that curtain 
But then you hear come out that curtain, you hear that sound of the crowd, and now you're in the zone, and that's all that matters. Ooh, Without that, it. it's probably like you walk out, and you might still be in that mood you might have been in behind the curtain, and now you have to go out there and work this match. Like, okay, hundred <laughs> percent. So this wasn't a question, but now I'm very curious. Before we wrap this up, what is all the stuff we have behind you? Like, what are we collecting here? Oh, everything. I I would move the camera around. Yeah, no, I, I don't expect it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My room's too much of a mess, but uh, I've got the retro X Men from the '90s all on card. Yeah, I didn't yeah. say X-Men. <laughs> that was my yeah. jam when they bought that back on Disney Plus. I binged through that show so quickly. Like, yeah. yeah. So th- that's that's those. Uh, yeah. I've I've got the Batman animated series over in the corner. I've got Spider Man animated cartoon. Uh, it's all oh, just. Yeah. Me repurchasing you toys that I wanted my, as a kid. My three favorites as a kid, and my three favorites yeah, me too, are, yeah. are Spider Man, Wolverine, and Batman. Those are my three. So, like, you just you me named too. them. And I was like, <laughs> oh, there you go. We definitely grew up in the same era. We're '90s kids in a sense. But, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> but other than that, thank you so much for doing this for us and taking the time out to talk to us today. I know it's like the night after Dynamite, so you probably just got home and just hanging out. But thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, no we'll love to talk again in the future. And uh, looking forward to see everything you guys do, whether it's you and Scorpio Sky. Hopefully, we get to see a Christian Cage, Captain Charisma versus All Ego. Hopefully, we get to see that down the road. Um, and make sure everybody, if you guys are uh, tuning into this, um, look in the bio section on the YouTube, and I'll put all the links to his vlog and everything as well. But if you're listening to this, I'll be in the description box as well. Go check out his vlog. Go support Ethan Page on social media. Where can they find you on social media? Uh, the Twitter is my busiest, so I would just check my Twitter out. It's at official ego. Uh, and on there, I promote everything and anything. I have a Patreon with uh, insane exclusive content, more kind of like uh, peek into my real life. And then uh, obviously my YouTube channel, I have Instagram, all that fun stuff. So yeah, <laughs> definitely ch- check out my Twitter. It'll link you to everything else. Check them out on Twitter. That will get you everywhere, guys. Is there anything else you want to add, Mike, before we wrap things up? Uh, besides that, Ethan Page has the best theme song in professional wrestling right now. Because uh, <laughs> I did ask that question when you did have a vlog recently. And then you described how much it has been like your favorite theme song in your professional wrestling career. So just really quick question. What was that creative process like having that theme song for AEW? He did yeah, mention it before the show. <laughs> it is the best entrance song going <laughs> today. Like there. I, so, oh man. Mikey Ruckus does a lot of the music for AEW. I think most of it. Uh, and we collaborated on this and I'll, I'll say collaborated very loosely because it was mostly him and me <laughs> saying, Oh, I, I love that. So, uh, I kind of gave him a song that I liked and I would, and I wanted to kind of walk out to, he recreated the beat in his own way and asked me like, Hey, is this something you feel you could vibe with? And I was like, Oh yeah, I think so. And then literally the next day he had it done like lyrics. Uh, the, everything was like, perfectly done sound wise uh and i was just like okay thumbs up great working with you dude (laughs) (laughs) that's amazing yeah Yeah. guys definitely go check out that theme song if you haven't heard it yet either or just tune into the show and watch AEW every wednesday dynamite guys on tnt (laughs) and if you're in canada tsn like us canadians up here but other than that and 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 don't forget the youtube events too uh especially monday nights dark elevation is a hell of a show uh if it's got top stars from dynamite performing for free for the fans on youtube it's accessible around the world so check that out too and you're gonna see a ton of stars of the future showing up on uh, elevation and dark every week um like i i don't know if i mentioned but if you guys follow sock mike mike on youtube he's interviewed a ton of people that have appeared on dark <laughs> that's why i want to make sure he's on here as well because he's an aw aw aficionado but other than that guys thank you and i'm i watch all wrestling because i'm the wrestling classic but other than that guys <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this interview with uh, and thank you again ethan page thank you very much for joining us today i really appreciate it and hope no you guys are doing the thing man oh yeah dig it uh-huh. it's time to say good night we sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment please drive home carefully and come back again soon good night